Hello, my name is Mr. Barr and I teach fourth and fifth grade in Seattle Public Schools. Before we start today's lesson, I just want to say hello to everyone at Dunlap Elementary, the school where I teach. I just can't wait to be back with all the amazing Dunlap students, teachers, and staff members. And I know whatever school you go to, your teachers feel the same way. Go Dolphins! Today is our third lesson on narrative fiction, where we read the book, Akiak, written and illustrated by Robert J. Blake. To recap what has happened so far, Akiak is a story of a dog named Akiak who is running in the Iditarod race in Alaska. At first, she's winning and her team is in first place, but then she gets snow in her paw and she has to quit. She escapes though, and starts following after her team as they try and complete the race. While we read today, we're gonna to pay close attention to our elements of fiction. Characters, the people in the story. Setting, where and when the story takes place. Plot, what happens to the characters in the story. And we are gonna add another one, conflict. That's the problem the characters need to solve. Why do we need to know all these different elements of fiction? Well, understanding elements of fiction is a great reading comprehension strategy. Think about it. If you know all about the setting, characters, plot, and conflict of a story, then you're absolutely gonna understand pretty much the entire thing. I'm so excited to see how this book ends, and I hope you are too. Let's see what happens today. Day nine. Mick rushed into White Mountain, 22 minutes behind Ketchum. Here the teams had to take an eight hour layover, and a layover is just time where you wait or rest before continuing on your journey. They had to take an eight hour layover to rest before the final dash for Nome. Mick dropped Big Boy and put Young Comet in his place. The team was down to eight dogs with 77 miles to go. Akiak pushed on. When her team left White Mountain at 6 p.m., Akiak was running through Golovin, just two hours behind. A crowd lined the trail to watch her run through the town. Day 10. Screaming winds threw bitter cold at the team as they fought their way along the coast. Then, halfway to the checkpoint called Safety, they came upon a maze of snowmobile tracks. The lead dogs lost the trail. Mick squinted, and squinted is just when you make your eyes really small to try and see better. Mick squinted through the snow, looking for a sign. There, going right. She recognized Ketchum's trail. Gee, she called. Gee, go right but the dogs wouldn't go. They wandered about, tangling up the lines. Mick straightened them out and worked the team up the hill. At the top, they stopped short. Something was blocking the trail. We're gonna to turn to our partners now, and you're gonna tell them what has happened in the story so far today. Remember, your partner can be a human that is right next to you, or it can be a pet, a stuffed animal, or some imaginary person you're calling on the phone. Go ahead and turn to your partner. What has happened so far? Maybe you told your partner that Akiak is getting closer and closer to mixed team. Maybe you mentioned that Mick's team is starting to get lost in the snow or that the race is getting close to the finish. Akiak, Mick called. She ran to her usual spot at the harness, waiting to be hooked in. Sorry, old girl, Mick hugged her. Rules say I can't put you back in harness, 
get in the sled. But instead, Akiak circled the lead dogs, pushing them and barking. What is it, girl? Mick asked. Akiak ran back down the hill. Mick laughed. Ketchum's team had taken the wrong trail. She turned her team around and rushed them down to Akiak, who jumped into the sled. Take us to Nome, Mick called to her. Mick first heard the noise a mile outside of Nome. At first, she wasn't sure what it was. It grew so loud that she couldn't hear the dogs. It was a roar, or a rumble. She was so tired after ten days of mushing, she couldn't tell which. Then she saw the crowd, and she heard their cheers. People had come from everywhere to see the courageous dog. And courageous just means brave. To see the courageous dog that had run the Iditarod Trail alone. As sure as if she had been in the lead position, Akiak won the Iditarod race. Nothing was going to stop this dog from winning, Mick told the crowd. Akiak knew it. The other dogs knew it too. <sighs> Sorry, I think it's allergies or something. Um, turn to your partner, tell him what happened at the end of our story. You might have told your partner that Akiak helped lead Mick's team when they were on the wrong trail. Or you maybe told your partner that Akiak and Mick won the Iditarod race. Now we're going to talk about the different elements of fiction in the story Akiak. We talked about these earlier in the week in a previous lesson, but now we're going to go into more detail. We know characters are the people in the story. And we know the main character of our story is Akiak, but how could we describe her? You might have said that she's old and experienced because of the different times in the text where it mentions how long she's been racing. You might also describe her as brave and resilient because the text has numerous examples where she keeps on going no matter what obstacle she's facing. Setting is where and when the story takes place. We said last time that the setting of the story was Alaska but can we be more specific? Robert J. Blake uses the actual Iditarod checkpoints to show how the setting changes throughout the story. Can you see them on this map? It's almost like he uses the setting to contribute to the plot because it adds suspense when we see how Mick and Akiak are getting closer and closer to the finish. The plot is what happens to the characters in the story. And there are so many different plot points that we could talk about. But is there one point that was most important near the end of the story? For me, it was right after Akiak met up with Mick and the rest of his team. That's when he ran in circles and barked to tell them that they were on the wrong path. That part's so important because it allows him to get into first place and eventually win the race. The 
Conflict is the problem the characters need to solve. What's the conflict in this story? At the beginning, the problem is that Akiak wants to finish in first because she never has. But that changes when she gets injured. And all of a sudden, the conflict or problem isn't about finishing in first, it's about survival. And can she even find Mick again? It just turns out that she solves both problems by finding Mick and finishing in first. Now we're gonna do a fun writing activity. Your task is to change the ending of Akia. The way that you can change the ending is by changing one or more of the different elements of fiction we've been talking about. Maybe Akiak gets teleported to a different setting. Maybe a new character is introduced. Maybe the conflict suddenly changes, or there's a different plot twist where something happens to Akiak or Mick, or maybe Ketchum comes back and tries to win at the very last second. You're in charge and you get to decide how does the ending change? Wait, what's that? You want me to change the ending so that there are cats in it? Hmm, I guess we could try. Hmm, okay. Adding a cat to Akiya. Well, let's start by saying Mick and Akiak are almost at the finish line. Then, a wild snow leopard jumped out of nowhere and attacked Akiak. Akiak fought bravely and defeated the snow leopard. Mick and Akiak's team still won first place. Make sure you have fun and be as creative as you can with your alternate ending. Make sure you indent. Make sure you have the best grammar and spelling you can. And then remember to read your writing to an adult or someone at home or anyone that you want when you're done. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Remember to find a narrative fiction book and read for at least 30 minutes. The whole time you're reading, you need to be thinking about all the different elements of fiction that we have learned about this week. Setting, plot, characters, and conflict. I'm going to be reading Elijah of Buxton by Christopher Paul Curtis. This book is about a boy who lives in Canada, right next to the American border, during the time of slavery. Since he lives in Canada, he's free, but slavery still exists just south of him. Someone comes to town one day and steals from his friend who's been saving all this money. Elijah has to go catch the thief and cross into the United States. Hmm, I wonder if the setting is going to play a big role in this one. I can't wait to start reading this one. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.